In August of 2014, a youth minister employed in an Alabama church was arrested and charged with 29 counts of sexual abuse of a 14-year-old female member of his youth group between 2010 and 2012. Kyle Adcock was then released on bail pending trial after his mother testified that he had a job waiting for him in Texas. It turns out that job was as a youth music minister for First Baptist Church in Bedford, Texas. First Baptist pastor Steve Knott told local station Fox 4 News that the church normally conducts background checks and that Adcock was only a temporary employee. The pastor also pointed out that at this time Adcock is only charged and has not yet been convicted. But as Julie Brooks, a member of the church whose child is in the music ministry program, said during an interview, kids trust ministers, and if they are approached by someone who works in the church, you would trust him. You would have no reason not to. She continued speaking of the charges against Adcock, saying, until that has been proven one way or another, you're not put back in a situation where this problem started from. Two holidays, Eid ul Adha, a Muslim holiday, and Sukkot, which is celebrated by the Jews, straddled the weekend of September 26th and 27th this year. Consequently, the hotels in the so-called Holy Land were expecting banner bookings as the two disparate populations converged in revelry. Or at least that's what they were hoping if the bigotry didn't interfere. Apparently, having learned from previous experience, the Jewish community is generally uncomfortable sharing a lobby with so many Palestinians and Arabs. The hotels decided to be proactive, to lessen the shock their Hebrew patrons might experience when they learn that Muslims take vacations too, Israeli hotels such as Club Hotel, the Crown Plaza, and Astral Hotel instructed their reservation staff to inform potential Jewish clients that there would be members of Hamigzar present, Jewish code meaning those who live in the sector, aka Muslims, present as well on the same dates. One has to wonder why this is such an issue. After all, it's not like either group has to worry that the other will clean the breakfast buffet out of all the bacon. Singing hymns reminiscent of the civil rights movement, such as We Will Not Be Moved, the parishioners of Wedgwood Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, gathered in worship and forgiveness after working to cover a homophobic slur which vandals had painted on their church's front door. The graffiti was not the first anti-gay assault the community, which is affiliated with the United Church of Christ and the American Baptist Churches, USA, has had to endure. After all, the church has publicly condemned the state's gay marriage ban for years. And in all probability, the motif they chose to cover the offensive scrawl with will only further make them a target. For now, however, the congregation stands behind their decision to paint over their defaced doors with not one color, but several. An entire rainbow of colors, to be specific. As Pastor Chris Ayer said, we didn't want the focus to be on the damage to our church property, but on the damage that has been done to LGBT Christians through systematic abuse from so many, and sadly, from so many denominations and Christians.